Welcome back everyone to the Two Guys in a Cooler channel. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at a brand new way to make salumi in your refrigerator. Under normal conditions, you really can't make things like copa, guanciale in your refrigerator because the conditions are all wrong. There's too much airflow, the humidity is way too low. You are going to get a piece of dried meat, but it's not going to be that beautiful charcuterie that we all have come to know and love. So in this episode, we're gonna be taking the Sausage Maker's dry aging steak wraps, which is designed for dry aging beef. We're gonna use it to wrap some cured pork, and then we're gonna put it in the fridge and see what happens after a couple of months. Truth be told, I don't know what's gonna happen in this experiment, but I can tell you this, if this product works, this is gonna be hands down the easiest way to make things like capicola, bressaola, pancetta, lonzino, you name it. Let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to do for this experiment is get our hands on a whole muscle. In this case, I'm using the Capicola. This comes from the shoulder of the pig. It makes a charcuterie known as Copa, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and spice it up with our cure salt and our special seasoning blend. If you want to know the recipe on how to make this spicy Capicola, check out that link in the top right-hand corner. I'm also gonna put a link in the description box below. So what we're doing right now with our Copa is we're basically just curing it. Now this step, is uh, the same no matter how you make your salumi. You're gonna cure your whole muscle first. That's gonna involve salt, you know, sugar, special seasonings, curing agents, things like that. And uh, we're gonna take this and vacuum seal it. And once it's vacuum sealed, we're gonna put it in the fridge for a designated amount of time. In this case, it's gonna take about two weeks in the fridge for that copa to cure properly, and then we can move on to the next step. Now for me, the really big part of this experiment is not only determining whether or not the dry aging steak wraps by the sausage maker can make salumi in the fridge, but it's also how does it stack up against traditional methods in regards to flavor and texture and things like that. So for this experiment, we're going to be doing it two ways. The first way, we're going to be using the dry aging steak wraps to wrap our whole muscle. Once we're done wrapping it, we're going to let it dry in the refrigerator to see what happens. And then the second way we're going to do this experiment is to take some collagen sheets from the sausage maker, wrap the other half of our whole muscle, and then actually hang that in our salami chamber, which has controlled temperature, controlled humidity. Inside the pack for the dry aging steak wraps comes an elastic netting and then a plant-based wrap. There's actually three per packet. And the wrap actually acts as a membrane around the whole muscle. So it protects your meat from drying out too quickly. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna use it right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my whole muscle and slice it right down the center. Using one of the dry aging steak wraps, we're gonna go ahead and place half of that copa right in the middle. And the only thing I wanna make sure is that my meat is slightly damp. If it's too wet, the wraps could rip. So you wanna be very gentle with it. They are kinda of delicate. And we're just gonna make sure that there's no air pockets. So I'm gonna squeeze out, push out any air pockets. And once I get the entire thing wrapped with that plant-based material, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a netting on it. And that's gonna hold that membrane right to that copa. And it's also gonna maintain its shape. Now that the copa's wrapped up, I went ahead and weighed it. Now, typically, you can let your copa dry from 30 to 40%. So I target mine between 35 and 40% weight loss, and once I hit my target, it's time to eat. Until then, it's gonna be in our kitchen fridge, and let's go ahead and get the second copa done on the collagen sheets. Once the sheet is on, we're gonna go ahead and put the netting all the way around it, and then we're gonna truss it up because this is gonna be hanging in our salami chamber with controlled humidity and controlled temperature for about six weeks. We're now gonna go ahead and prick it, make sure there's no air pockets. It's been weighed and we're targeting about a 35% weight loss. And this is gonna go right into the salami chamber with the temperature at about 55 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity at about 80%. And now the test begins. So with one in our salami chamber under controlled conditions, the other one in our refrigerator with our cheese and butter and milk. And we're gonna come back in about three weeks and weigh them both to see where they're at. So it's been three weeks 
This is the copa that's been drying in the salami chamber. It's covered in Penicillium naugeavense, so it's got that real funky, cheesy kind of smell. It looks great. It's got a nice firm feel to it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the one from the refrigerator, and here it is. It looks almost exactly like the day that we put it in. One of my concerns was that it would develop a pellicle a lot like dry-aged beef that I would end up having to shave off, which is something I don't want to do. So I'm kind of excited to see that a pellicle hasn't been formed. It's a little softer than the one that's been curing in the salami chamber. Let's weigh them and see what the results are so far at three weeks. First up is the copa from the salami chamber, and I'm so excited. This is such a neat experiment. We're going to take the actual weight, divide it by the initial weight, and then subtract that by one. I'm getting a 0.20 or a 20% weight loss so far. And right now, that's exactly where it needs to be based off of the size of the copa. Next up is the copa from the refrigerator. It does feel a little softer, so I'm curious to see what the weight loss is, but we're gonna take the actual weight divided by the initial weight, subtract that by one, and it looks like we have a number of 0.098 or 10% weight loss. If you do this at home, your results may vary depending on the temperature of your fridge, but remember, projects like this generally take quite some time, so just put it in your fridge and be patient. Now, what I did find was that the copa in the salami chamber dried a little bit faster. It took about six weeks to hit its target, and the copa in the house refrigerator took about eight weeks. And this is what they look like at 35% weight loss. First impressions, obviously one's covered in mold, one isn't. They both feel about the same. The one that's from the fridge seems plumper. It seems bigger. I did notice that removing the casing from the one that dried in the fridge was super easy. I just ran it under some water and it came off kind of like a gelatin sheet, whereas the other one I just peeled off. And so neither one of them was a problem to remove the casing. They look amazing. Both copas have a very vibrant reddish color and they both sliced about the same. So let's go ahead and taste it to see whether or not there's a texture difference or a flavor difference between uh, either one of these copas. First up is the copa dried in the salami chamber with controlled humidity and controlled temperature. And the texture is incredibly tender. The fat melts in your mouth. It's smooth. It's got a nice funky, earthy uh, flavor to it. It's incredibly delicious. Well balanced, properly dried, no dry ring, amazing. And so that's copa number one. Now it's time to try copa number two. This one was wrapped in the Sausage Maker's dry aging steak wraps and allowed to dry in our refrigerator. And it looks absolutely amazing. Because we didn't have to truss it up, it kept its shape really well, and it has a beautiful color. The texture of it is also very tender. The fat is really creamy, melts in our mouth, just like the other one, but the flavor is actually slightly different. Copa number one had a distinctive funkiness to it that is probably attributed to the mold growth that was grown while it was in the chamber. Whereas Copa number two, the one using the dry aging steak wraps, was a little bit milder. It actually didn't have that funky element that Copa number one had, which actually may or may not be a bad thing. I found the flavor to be well-rounded and balanced, incredibly delicious. Also, to my surprise, the copa using the steak wraps didn't develop a pellicle like you would normally have with dry-aged beef. So after about a two-month curing and drying time, we didn't have to shave anything off of our charcuterie. The flavor definitely stands alone. Texture and color-wise, I would say it's identical, but it's, it is a definite milder version of a traditionally dried copa. So now for the million dollar question, is the Sausage Makers dry aging steak wraps a viable option for making charcuterie at home in your refrigerator? Well, both Chandler and I agree based off of the results that we think it is a 100% viable option, especially if you don't have a drying chamber and you wanna make things like pancetta, bresaola, lonzino, guanciale. If you wanna get into charcuterie, this is the easiest, best, safest way to do it. I didn't think it was gonna work, but it worked like a charm. It took a little bit longer and the flavor was a little more mild, but we didn't have to worry about any of that unwanted mold growth or that dreaded case hardening. Take a second to thank the patrons of the channel. Thanks a lot, guys. If you like what we do and you wanna support our work, be sure to check the description box below 
And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. If you're new to our channel, thanks for watching. Welcome to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. You're not going to want to miss what we've got lined up for you. It's a real doozy. See you in the next video.